Good morning, everyone. It's a real blessing to be here again. So, it is not easy for me to prepare the sermon in English, you know. But anyway, it's a really blessing. So, before I move to uh, San Francisco, the Bay Area to Michigan, I walk at the Burmese Baptist Church. So, at that time, I'm very good speaking in Burmese. So right now I moved to Michigan, work as a pastor in Kachin Church. I'm very good in Kachin right now. But as you know, I'm not very good in you know, English. But anyway, it's a really blessing to be here again and to prepare someone in English. So first of all, praise to God for allowing me to share someone today. And also thank you, Burden Baptist Church members who gave me this opportunity again, share the word today. So, I don't know, I'm not, I'm very good uh, preach in Kachin or not, but as Frank said, I'm, very, I'm a really very good driver. <laughs> as you know that <laughs> when I was 30 in uh, the Bay Area for my master and for my doctorate degree, I support myself to driving taxi in the Bay Area. So I know the, the California, Bay Area. I know everywhere and every corner of the city. And then also I'm, I know all of the homeless in this area. But right now I don't know. There's a lot of homeless in there. But anyway, so title for someone today is Powerful choose to build the church. So Frank already read that scriptures in Hebrew chapter 5 verse 5 is said. I would like to read again. Who saw the, the copy and shadow of heavenly things? As Moses was divinely instructed when he was about to make the tabernacle. For he said, see that you make all things according to the patterns show you on the mountain. So according to these scriptures, God told Moses how to build the tabernacle. So how to build the church. So we are able to see more in depth in Exodus chapter 25 through to 28. But I don't want to read all of that chapter. Let me summarize. You know, God described Moses to do first things to build the tabernacle is the earth. You all know that which also means the covenant book. And then the table for the bread to present. And the lamp stamp is for lighting. So all these things are the core of the tabernacle, which means God never told Moses to start the building from the outside, like the tents, like the structure. But instead, instruct, instruct him and ask him to build from the inside out, not vice versa. So as we reflect on this instruction today, we are able to see that in action at the, at the church. So the core value of the church is all from the heart, but not the structure, also not the building. So we can also see this with the relationship we have with God, God wants us to live in not the handmade building. God wants us to dwell in our heart as the building, as the church. So we all know that the purpose for the tabernacle and the sanctuary was to build the dwelling place of God. We can see through these scriptures the Exodus chapter 25 through to 28, 
we see that God gave Moses blueprint of the tabernacle. But why was it so important for him to follow the instruction given? So the pattern of the tabernacle was according to the Hebrew chapter 5, chapter 8, verse 5. So according to the heavenly reality. That's why the Bible said the church is the shadow of heaven. That's been our body, our heart, must be the shadow of the heaven. That's why church is the copy and shadow of the heavenly. So we all know that 2,000 years ago, Jesus said he will build his church. But he was not talking about the building, not the organization, but instead talking about the people who are called out their homes together, together and be impact and influence on the society. So you and I all, we all are this church we ask the people of God, and he is the head of the church. Church is the body of Christ. So today you and I are called to be co-builder with Jesus. So now on the building side, this means to have him build his church. That's why the Apostle Paul described himself. I am the co-labor with Jesus, helping build the church. So the church is not a place where you go, but instead something you are the part of helping build and shape. So in order to build something, you will need tools so that is the same as the building a church. But the issue is that we don't need these extra tools. But instead, we already have the tools we need to build on his church. So I would like to share today four powerful weapons or tools to build the church. So the tools are number one is love. Number two is serve, number three is prayer, and number four is giving. So number one, two is love. So Peter, you all know that who was the first church founder? He wrote in his letter that we are able to see in First Peter chapter 4, verse 8 to 9. It says, above all, Love each other deeply because love cover over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. So the meanings of love is broad, but there are many ways to show love. But in scripture, the word hospitality is the action word of love. So I believe many people, you will not remember what the sermon was preached on that day. But we will always remember who shows them love in that day. That's why in Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, the Paul said, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of this is love. So today, because of your love, your brother and sister, the kitchen people, able to worship and grow in this sanctuary, in this church, this is the witness of your love. That's why one of the pastors said, the mega church depends on not how many people are in this church, but instead, how much people love each other like us. The second choose is the choose of serving. The first Peter chapter 4, verse 10, it says, Each one should use whatever gift he has received 
to serve others. I saw on the wall outside of the church, this church is built around 1960. So 63 years of serve that the great, great members of this church serve because of their service. So we are able to worship here very comfortably. So for the next coming generations, we will need to act and service for them like the great, great members of the Burden Baptist Church. So in the Bible, that's why Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12 said, it says, to equip his people for walk of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. So how an individual self is very important in a church, this won't be accomplished one person, but instead many people have been served. So we all know that church like a sport team. Everyone is involved in contributing the team winning. The third tooth is to prayer. First Timothy chapter two, verse one to three mentions requests and the section and thanksgiving be made for everyone for kings and those in authority. So many people, many of the believers, they spend their times praying for what they need. But we should all remember that the scripture reminds us we will need to also pray for the church, for the pastor, for the leaders, and for the, each others. That's why in the Old Testament, Exodus chapter 12, we all see that the Israelite battling with the uh, Amalekites, the Israelite won the battle. However, it was not because the skill of the warrior Joshua as a warrior. But up the mountain, Moses and Aaron, they are praying and sporting jam, which led jam in victory. So someone once said, prayer is a mighty weapon at the disposal of every man or woman who loves God and knows his son, Jesus Christ. So finally, the last tools we need is the tools of giving. Proverbs verse 3, chapter 9 says, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruit of all your crops. So offering means it's not simply not putting your money in the basket, but instead putting the money in the basket with your heart. So we have worshiping for nearly 10 years in this place as a kitchen church. This is because of your giving and providing us with the space of worship. So this is also witness of your giving from your heart. And also teach us to learn to give to others. That's why 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7 said, God loves a cheerful giver. So I really thank you, all the church, the Burden Baptist Church members. You all are a really cheerful giver. That what God loves. That's why in the Bible, Jesus prays and accepts the widow's offering, not because of the amounts of the money, but from the widow willing heard. So we all see that we are the co-builder to build his church. The love, prayer, self-giving is the powerful weapons 
We don't need to fight and we don't need to try to get that weapons. God already gave up. And we also receive it. We have to use for the next generation to come. So let me end with this. And the Bible said, Jesus is the head of the church. Church is the body of Christ. Yes, we are the core builder of the church. So please, let's continue to be one and help shape the church for the future generation and generation by loving, giving, serving, and praying. Thank you so much. May God bless you all. Thank you.